Hey guys and gals, Ashton here with Gin Sense with another fragrance review. Today we're taking a look at a fragrance that was released in 2016 by the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. It is La Malle Essence de Parfum. So this is still difficult to get in the United States. I had to order this from the United Kingdom. I'll go ahead and put in the description where I got that from and a coupon code that you can use because I was unaware of the code when I placed the order so I paid the full amount on the website. But you can get 10% off since they sent me a, uh, a little flyer with the purchase with the coupon code. So that would have been nice to know about before, but my loss is your gain. We'll go ahead and check out the presentation on this and then jump into the fragrance itself. All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out the presentation. So the can slash box is pretty much the same as you would see with most Lamals. This one comes in a copper coloration. Again, you open from the bottom and then the bottle sits inside like so. So this is obviously a reimagining of the normal Lamal bottle. It has more modern lines, uh, a more modern futuristic looking uh, silhouette of a man's torso as you can see there. It actually looks really slick, nice lines on it. Looks uh, like I said futuristic, uh, classy. It looks much better than the normal bottle. And you have the little stopper here, which is metal. Uh, it just slides in there on the atomizer to keep it from spraying when you don't want it to. And the atomizer itself sprays out a decent amount of juice. It gets the job done. Uh, it doesn't have a, uh, a cap that sits over top. None of the Lamals do. They just come with these. So overall, this is a huge improvement, in my opinion, to the normal presentation of the other Lamals. So cardamom is the dominant note in the top here, and it's not even close. You don't really pick up any bergamot, very little pepper, mainly all cardamom. And this fragrance really messes with me, honestly, uh, because it's a leather-based fragrance with a good amount of cardamom, and it smells like something I own, but I can't pinpoint what it is. It's like I know I've smelled this before, so I pulled out eight different fragrances. Originally, I thought maybe it was a Polo Supreme Leather or Davidoff Leather Blend. It's neither of those. Uh, it's not African leather. I went through a bunch of different things and the only thing that makes sense to me is maybe this fragrance borrows uh, a lot of things from some other leather fragrances I have and that being combined kind of makes me think of other fragrances even though it doesn't smell the exact same as them. So it is different than all of the leather fragrances I own. Uh, and yet it borrows some from a lot of them, which gives it a really familiar feel to me. The lavender and leather come in pretty early on. The lavender sits in the background. The leather mixes more with the cardamom. As it dries down, you get some vanillic sweetness that comes in, but it's more a touch of sweetness. It's not something that's very, very sweet. It's not like the original Lamal in that sense. And really, the vanilla and the lavender take a backseat to the leather and the cardamom here. So it has a bit of the original's DNA, uh, but it goes a completely different route and honestly that's for the better since you know Lamal has so many flankers at some point you need to do something that deviates a little bit. The leather in this fragrance is completely devoid of anything animalic or dirty which is not a bad thing in this circumstance. It smells like a smooth oiled up leather with a soft vanilla powder and some toned down, maybe slightly muted spices mingling along with that leather scent. It's pleasant, just nothing mind blowing. One thing that's kind of a drawback with this fragrance is the performance. It lasts on me about five hours, which is not great for an eau de parfum, especially considering this comes across as a winter fragrance. You would want it to be a little bit stronger, and it's not. And projection wise, it sits close to the skin pretty early on. Uh, it's got a light sillage. This is not a fragrance that really projects very far, and it loses a lot of its power, you know, an hour in. Uh, sometimes even less depending on what kind of weather we're talking about. So that's a drawback here. Performance is not great. This is a classy scent, certainly more classy than the original Lamal would be considered. Uh, so it's easier to dress up. You can wear it casually as well, so it's versatile in that sense. I don't usually really put ages on things, but if I had to, I would say this is probably for somebody in their early 20s and up. It doesn't really come across as a high school fragrance. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't wear it if you were a teenager and really liked it for some reason. So yeah, for me, vanilla, leather, cardamom, 
Those are legitimately three of my favorite notes, so they would have to really F this up for me to dislike it. And they didn't completely F it up, so I do like it. I find it pleasant, I find it nice, um, but it's not something that is gonna work its way into my top tens, I feel like. Uh, it's not anything along those lines, so it's more one of those releases that's good, um, but it's probably not gonna blow too many people away. It's not one of those fragrances that transcends general likes and dislikes. So if you don't like wearing things that are leather, cardamom, vanilla, um, then it may not appeal to you. It's not one of those fragrances that's going to be considered a masterpiece or anything like that. Uh, the bottle is fantastic. So that's probably the best thing it has going for it. Uh, performance, not so good. And the scent is nice, like I said, but um, that is because of my personal preferences. Uh, again, if you are not into vanilla leather cardamom, then you probably are not going to be into this. All right, guys, that's Jean-Paul Gaultier, La Mal, Essence de Parfum. Um, let me know what you think about this one. Again, it's not that easy to get in the U.S. right now, so your best bet at the moment is ordering from overseas. The site that I used got it to me, I think, in a week and a half, and it wasn't that expensive, all things considered. Uh, cheaper than eBay, anyway, and at least I got a legitimate bottle. Um, it's nice, just not anything that necessarily breaks the mold, not anything that's going to set the world on fire. So, again, uh, if you smelled this, let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.